Nah. Yo, what is going on? Headliner Nation, Kyle back with the Fantasy Headliners. Time to rank some Week 8 ball catchers. And I'm talking about wide receivers and tight ends. And if you remember last week in Week 7 for the Start and Sit video on wide receivers, I told you all we were going to do a giveaway of a Stefan Diggs autographed football. And we have a winner of that football. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone throw a little congratulations out to Matthew. Alphys, and I probably messed up that last name, and I certainly apologize. But last week, he commented, he liked the video. Fancy Headliner channel and fan base are my favorite part of every day. I've been here for a couple of years and absolutely love watching the channel grow as a community. Most importantly, I love the dedication and passion you all put into analysis to guide us all to FF victories. Much love and respect to you all. Cheers. So, Matthew, congratulations on winning that football. Make sure that you reach out to us, info at thefantasyheadliners.com, so we can get all of your information and double-check to make sure that you did Create an account over at Pristine Auction using code word headliners. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you do that today. So then you can be entered into all of our giveaways in the future. But let's go ahead and jump into those rankings. We're going to talk about my top 36 wide receivers to get things kicked off. Number one is going to be Cooper. Cu honestly, honestly, I wanted to put Tyreek Hill at number one this week because he should absolutely just shred Detroit. But in all honesty, Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, Stefan Diggs, Tyree Kill, Jamar Chase, Devontae Adams, like all three of these, all, all three of these guys, all six of these guys. I mean, if you own them, obviously they're your number one wide receiver and they're in your lineup. You're just nitpicking with guys in the top six, to be to be quite honest with you. So anybody that gets upset or worried about these rankings right here, there's no reason to because it's they're all amazing football players. They all have the same amount of upside. You're starting these guys every single week. So it's it's really hard to just not nitpick with that with that group right there. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins at number seven going up against Minnesota. Saw him back last week. Looks good. Looks healthy. That's exactly what we want to see from him. We'll continue to be a big target hog moving forward forward AJ Brown at number eight going up against Pittsburgh this week Pittsburgh's defense still allowing the most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers Jalen Waddle at number nine going up against Detroit I'm going to be honest with you all if I keep getting questions about should I start Jalen Waddle he's listed as questionable my answer will be the same thing every single time yes as long as he's playing you're starting Jalen Waddle CD Lamb going up against Chicago at number 10 a big trade there Moving Robert Quinn, who is one of their main defensive players, should give uh, should give Dak Prescott a little bit more time this week and give CeeDee Lamb some good upside as well. Amon Ross St. Brown going up against Miami. Last week, missed out on the concussion protocol. Had to leave the game because of the new rules in the NFL regarding potential concussions. He had to leave the game, could not come back, but was later ruled that he did not suffer a concussion. So that's all systems go for Amon Ross St. Brown this week against Miami. Mike Evans against Baltimore on Thursday night football. That one's always a tough one for me. Thursday night players, I don't necessarily love them. This could end up being a little bit better of an opportunity. Hopefully they can get things going. Mike Evans would have had a huge week last week if it had not been for that drop, uh, drop touchdown. T. Higgins going up against Cleveland should be a good opportunity for him this week. Still seeing a good amount of targets. Just hasn't really produced at the level of Chase or Boyd, but still seeing a good amount of targets. Chris Godwin, again, going up against Baltimore. Godwin right now seeing a good amount of targets, just not really seeing that upside because he hasn't really scored. Debo Samuel at 15, moving him down in the rankings. Number one, we'll see what Christian McCaffrey does with a little bit more of an expanded role. Two, dealing with a hamstring injury. Gabe Davis at number 16, uh, big play upside against Green Bay. Absolutely love it. Jair Alexander will be on Stefan Diggs. Gabe Davis might not see seven, eight targets a game, but all he really needs is four or five to make his day. Chris Olave against Las Vegas continues to be a beast without Michael Thomas or Jarvis Landry. Michael Pittman Jr. going up against Washington. Got him, I mean, a good matchup for him this week. Just got him a lot lower because we're going to see how Sam Ellinger does. Tyler Lockett coming in at number 19. No DK Metcalf more than likely this week. Apparently had kind of a limited practice but hasn't really done anything this week coming back from that knee injury. Luckily don't need surgery, which is great. Tyler Lockett will be the number one, but that New York Giants defense has been very stout this week or this season. Devontae 
Devontae Smith at number 20, looking for him to have a decent week against Pittsburgh. Very volatile. Those wide receivers, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith are. You could definitely get wide receiver 20 numbers. You could get wide receiver 40 numbers. Amari Cooper on Monday Night Football against Cincinnati. We'd like to go a lot higher with him, but Cincinnati's defense also very, very good, allowing uh, the fifth fewest fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers right now. Cortland Sutton against Jacksonville. It does look like Russell Wilson is going to be back this week. Cortland Sutton with Russell Wilson tends to be a little bit of the safer play, but unfortunately no one really has any upside in that offense right now. Adam Thielen against Arizona. Really, we're banking on a touchdown this week. Five, six targets if he catches five or six of those. Gets you around 60 yards or so. Not bad, not great, but if he scores, then he becomes a very reliable player. Christian Kirk against Denver. This is a very tough matchup over in London. Early game. I'm being very cautious with Christian Kirk. That's why I've got him a lot lower this week. Very touchdown dependent for me. DJ Moore trying not to get too hyped up after a really good week last week, but no Robbie Anderson, no more CMC. Opens up a lot of targets for DJ Moore. He's been getting decent targets this year, though. And he still hasn't really done anything with him. Not that, that, that that's his, that's not his fault by any means. That's been more quarterback play than really on him. But it's a really good matchup against Atlanta. I'm just trying to be very cautious with it. Jacoby Myers against the Jets. Not a whole lot of upside for me, but still sees a decent amount of targets. Brandon Cooks against Tennessee uh, with no Nico Collins. Should open up hopefully a few more targets for him. Tennessee did very well last week against Indianapolis, but that might have been more Matt Ryan than anything. Brandon Ayuk at number 20 against the Rams. You know, hopefully Debo plays, but if he doesn't, I don't think it affects Brandon Ayuk too much. Talked about it in the start and sit video. They have so many weapons around him now with Kittle and the addition of CMC that even with no Debo, he still won't get so smothered on the defensive side of the football that he'll be a, a good asset for you. Tyler Boyd at number 29 has been absolutely balling out going up against Cleveland on Monday night football. Got him a little bit lower though because he just... He, he isn't T. Higgins, and he isn't Jamar Chase. So he has good upside every single week, but his floor is a lot lower than those two guys. Al Nazard, really tough matchup against Buffalo. If he doesn't score, he's probably not going to be fantasy viable. We've still got him inside the top 30, though, because he's Aaron Rodgers' number one right now. Terry McLaurin with a tougher matchup against Indianapolis. We're going to be careful. I am going to include him inside the top 36, though, because Taylor Henneke does tend to look towards Terry McLaurin quite a bit. Terry, Taylor, Taylor to Terry. They've got a little bit of a connection there. Matt Collins at number 32. Definitely could see him scoring a touchdown this week. Deontay Johnson and George Pickens back-to-back -back here. Tough matchup against Philadelphia. Both of them should see a decent amount of targets, but can we get a big play out of them? Curtis Samuel against Indianapolis at number 35. Don't really love him this week. I'm very worried about that Washington offense producing at the type of level we need. We've seen Curtis Samuel kind of drop off from the beginning of the season. And then Jerry Judy at number 36. Again, tougher matchup. Going up against Jacksonville so we'll see uh we'll see if he can get himself going this week uh over across the pond and if he can the upside especially again Russell Wilson looking towards Cortland Sutton a little bit more just hasn't really been there for me who are some players just missing the cut that might be noteworthy for all of you Garrett Wilson still the wide receiver one there in New York for me if I had to pick somebody from New York it would be him uh Corey Davis obviously dealing with a sprained MCL um, and because of that could open up a few more targets no more Brees Hall for the rest of the season wouldn't be surprised if Garrett, Garrett Wilson has a fancy viable day but because of the way they spread the ball around I'm, I'm being very very hesitant to risk it over some guys who might have a little bit more upside. Rashad Bateman could end up having a decent matchup this week. I'm just concerned because he's not getting enough volume. And if you're a member, I did a video breakdown, a film breakdown this past week on the Ravens offense and kind of what's been going on with it. And it's just, it's very bland right now, unfortunately. So for Rashad Bateman, absolutely there's an opportunity. But with the way the offense has produced the last couple of weeks and the fact that he hasn't gotten a whole lot of targets over the course of the season, I'm being cautious with that this week. Drake London, you know, wide receiver one in Atlanta, but they just run the football way too much. Wondell Robinson, you can even throw in Darius Slayton in this if you want to talk about him. You can talk about him really kind of in the same breath. Wondell Robinson, going to see a lot of targets. If you're in a PPR league, if you can get 
get five, six receptions out of him. You only might get 40 or 50 yards from him, but it would be more than enough at that point to give you about 10 fantasy points. Half PPR standard, not really looking towards him. I'd look towards Darius Slayton maybe just a little bit more with some more touchdown upside. And Michael Gallup, big playability is there. Hasn't really, you know, looked great since returning from his injury, which is to be expected. Don't want to put any pressure on him. Just continue to keep an eye on it. When he breaks out, we might need to start rolling him out a little bit more often. What about those tight ends? Who at the tight end position do we have that we can look forward to this week? Well, of course, with no Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews will take over as number one. And George Kittle will be number two for me. Definitely going with both of those guys at the tight end position. George Kittle has looked fantastic fantastic over the last couple of weeks. He's going to be facing the Rams this week. Uh, Jalen Ramsey's been absolutely slaughtered at times this season, though. You've Again, you've got Brandon Ayuk. You've got Christian McCaffrey. So for me, George Kittle still has a good amount of upside. Zach Ertz going up against Minnesota. Hopefully he can bounce back. He still continues to be one of the safer tight ends. Between him, Dallas Goddard, and Tyler Higby, they're probably the safer tight ends out of anyone named Mark Andrews and George Kittle. They don't have a whole lot of upside, but they get a decent amount of targets for the three, four, and five wide or tight ends in my rankings. Pat Fryermuth at number six has a little bit more upside for me. I like Patty F quite a bit, and I would continue to roll with him, especially given the fact that him and Kenny Pickett seem to be right there with each other and connected. TJ Hawkinson at number seven. Love me some TJ Hawkinson. However, the Detroit Lions don't love him every single week. Sometimes he's a blocker. Sometimes he's a receiver. I'm in Ross St. Brown is back this week. Are we still banged up with Josh Reynolds? Will DeAndre Swift play this week? There's a lot of question marks there with TJ Hawkinson. Taysom Hill at number eight. I continue to be very conservative with his ranking because again, he's either going to get you a whole lot of points or not really a whole lot. I mean, last week he scored a touchdown and still only got you like eight points, which by the way, that's only two more points than what a touchdown is. Evan Ingram at number nine, lots of targets for Evan Ingram. Tough matchup against Denver. Greg Dulcich being cautious with him. He's been playing very, very well. And I like what I've seen so far since he returned from his injury. But again, that the offense just still continues to scare me. So I'm trying to be cautious with it. Mike Gusecki at number 11 against Detroit. He has a little bit of upside this week. Irv Smith Jr. at number 12 against Arizona. Arizona allows the most fancy points to opposing tight ends. Irv Smith Jr. We're banking on finding the end zone this week. Bobby Tunyon going up against Buffalo, a tough matchup, but even tougher on the outside for the wide receivers. Dalton Schultz at number 14. I've got him as a sit this week because I think there's some more upside options for you out there. But if you own him and you don't own anybody in front of him, then you might as well roll with it. If you own Dalton Schultz and you want a little bit more safety than maybe an upside from a Mike Gusecki or an Irv Smith, then go with Dalton Schultz. I completely understand. Will Disley with possibly no DK Metcalf this week is a start for me. Kyle Pitts going up against Carolina. We're not doing anything with Pitts. If I were you, I wouldn't even play him. Juwan Johnson at number 17. If we don't have any Michael Thomas, if we don't have any Jarvis Landry, this is another good opportunity for Juwan Johnson this week against Las Vegas. And then Jordan Aikens against Tennessee coming off 68 receiving yards last week. Again, a banged up Nico Collins. To me, Jordan Aikens screams a whole lot of value is a potential streaming option this week there you go ladies and gentlemen appreciate appreciate you all again congratulations to matthew on winning that stefan diggs autograph football make sure you hit us up info at the fancy headliners.com so we can get all of your information before you leave here though hit that like button for me subscribe to the channel if you're new here and leave me a comment down below and let me know which wide receiver or tight end you are most excited for on your team this week. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get out of here though. Peace out. Stay safe and stay healthy. And I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. <laughs>